Welcome back to Pedalbox, where this time we're finally delivering on a years old promise to 3D print our way out of some problems we've made. Except, um, not with this one, because on our fourth attempt, it's wrong as well. But before I get too excited about installing these, I'm going to hand off to Past Me, who is on the bench over there about an hour ago, working on our steering column. Before we get too stuck in underneath the dashboard, because honestly that's quite an uncomfortable and miserable place to be, I'm going to do a little bit of easier work up on the top setting up our horn. Obviously this is something that we do need to get through the IVA, which is one of the many items on our big list here. In fact, where is the horn? I think it's right here, just to get that plugged in. So we're hoping to tick that off. And the way we're going about that is I've ordered a little 55 mil uh, round horn button that just fits right into the middle of a steering wheel. I'm not gonna actually do it properly because it does take a, a little bit of jiggery pokery to get it in. But that sits in the middle there. It does actually fall out, interestingly, so we need to figure out a better way of holding it. But that fits through there. We get the cable coming out the back. And this right here is the original VW Audi uh, steering wheel connector cable. So that originally took like an airbag wire and a horn wire. And that plugged in two. I'm trying to hold this without getting too greasy. Plugs into this connector on the front here, which is on like a little... Um, it's not on slip rings, so it won't turn forever. There's just a little ribbon cable in there that has a bunch of slacks. As you wind it up, it sort of tightens the ribbon around when you unwind it. It takes up all the excess. So because we're able to use this with these connectors that we've managed to dig out of our boxes, it means we don't have to worry about running wires through anywhere and then potentially getting like bound up inside here or getting caught and shorting against the metal body. VWID have done this for us, which means we're nice and safe, nice and easy. Off the other side of this, it just connects onto this bottom corner. So that's another of the same type of connector that we've rigged up onto two extension leads that we've run there. So we're gonna connect out of there into the rest of the car's wiring harness. We're gonna use the original, the factory like horn relay, the factory horns and everything. They're all mounted up on the body. I think we'll have some video of that coming up in a second. But before I actually install this, there are a few other things we need to take care of on the column while we're at it. Because another item that's on this list is right here, it's under the anti-theft category, and that is a steering lock or an immobilizer. Now we've chosen the easy route because this car did originally have a steering lock. This is the uh, barrel that we took out of it, the ignition barrel that we removed. We've actually managed to brake ours, so when we start it and run it, that all works fine, but when we pull the key, this little pin here is supposed to pop into the steering column and lock it in place, but you can see it does not do that. So here is the new ignition barrel that I mentioned at the very tail end of our last episode. When I turn off the ignition and remove the key, that pin pops out and that's going to hold our steering column in place. So that should meet our IVA requirement for a steering lock. Now these bolts just pop straight through the little plate on here and into the top of the ignition barrel. Now before we go and install this in the car for real, we want to keep the space available because we do need to get back to those brake and clutch pedal switches that have been causing us so much pain. Uh, they're pretty complex shapes, annoyingly. We can't use any of the factory stuff because we're not using the factory firewall and pedal box and everything. So we're having to uh, make our own holders for them and that's taken quite a few goes around to get them the right shape and size and everything. But as of this morning, I think we've got working holders for both of those switches. So we can get those installed and then that means that the, ped the uh, pedal box is all done, which means we can finally put this back in without it getting in the way of future work in there. So I'll just pass this off to Aid and we'll have a look at some of those brackets right now. So here are the final pieces that we ended up making. So the brake pedal switch holder is in two pieces. We've got this nice top plate that fits over the round section of the body. That's a really nice positive fit there that holds everything together there. And then that assembly slides into the second piece. And now we can put, a th there's a, a hole running the whole way through here. And we can just bolt straight from the top all the way down into the body of the car on the firewall. So that holds in place with just one bolt. That's all really nice. And we've got a little pin on the pedal that just presses onto that. And the clutch switch holder is a lot simpler construction, thankfully, because this one, we're just gonna put a zip tie around the back to hold it in place, because all the force that we're putting on it is in that direction. And there's a little hole on the side of the pedal box, a little, uh, I'm not sure if it's for weight saving or what, but there's a hole in the side. We're just gonna send a bolt through the bottom on here. And this little hole in the, um... give me a second. While we work this out, why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? 
Okay, I lied to you. It turns out this isn't actually quite the final piece. I've just noticed an error that I made in the CAD model. So this is meant to sit on the side of the pedal box. Is a, we've got the bottom plate and the back plate that obviously everything kind of fits to. And there's a big triangular gusset up the side connecting the two for strength. And we were going to pop this down onto that through a little hole inside of it that would hold it all together. The problem is I put a material inside that slot there that would set it to the right angle so that when you set it down on that gusset, the, uh, the sort of base in here would sit at the right angle for this whole thing to be at. Unfortunately, I put it at the right, kind of at the inverse angle. I ramped it the wrong way, so this isn't actually going to fit like at all. But at least as far as how the rest of it fits, this is pretty much accurate. So we've got the, the actual switch just presses into it. We zip tie around it to hold it in or something similar. And then whenever we press the pedal, it just presses onto the face of it like that. And it's all held in place. Um, so yeah, I think I just need to modify the model. We'll reprint this. God bless 3D printing being fast at least. Uh, this is the, we're definitely leaning on the rapid part of rapid prototyping here. And uh, you can see there's some pre previous versions as well where we've tried this in the past and made one mistake after another on each of these different parts. So every single one of these was wrong in some way. And we kept taking like little tiny steps closer and closer to how it had to be. Because it turns out when you don't have 3D models of the pieces that you're working toward, it's a bit tricky to build 3D models around them. Well, as you can see by the mess of tools around, we've already done quite a bit of work on the wiring today to sort out a bunch of problems. We managed to tear a couple of connectors out whilst we were looking for the horn relay wiring and trying to find all of the pinouts for those, so we had to repair them. We've also connected up the horn right the way through the loom. and We were toying with, at one point, just running the switch right across and getting rid of the relay entirely, but... It doesn't hurt to use all the wiring that's already there. It would still be in the mass of the loom anyway, and we decided that it was just easier to leave it as it is. So we've now got our horn cable, uh, our horn power cable running out of the relay and down to the front of the car. We're going to put these behind the passenger side headlight on the left hand side at the front. We've also managed to unpick all of our other cables. This is the clutch switch, this is the brake switch, so we can get those in and we need to do, I think, two more connections because we need to connect up the horn switch that goes into the relay, which is down here, which we'll do once we've got the steering column in and we can connect all of that up and make sure that the cables are the right length so we don't have even more massive bundle of cable in here. We've also run in the power for uh, the head unit because I want some audio in here. So we now have the head unit power wired into the correct fuse as well. So that is all sorted. And we also have the power from before we need to wire into a switch for the fan override at the front. So that will all be going in here. But that is, fingers crossed, the last piece of wiring underneath the dashboard or in the dashboard that we actually need to get stuck into. And I am so pleased to be done with that, I hope. I'm probably going to have to eat my words later, but we'll see where we get to. For now, I'm going to go and install those horns. This is one of the dual tone horns that we have from the TT. The other one I've just installed under here. We're bolting onto this little crash structure underneath the front wing. So these both just bolt in when I don't throw the nut somewhere. And we're just leaving these as simple as possible to attach. They are asymmetric, so they do need to go in a particular way round. Otherwise, the flute's on the front. Apparently, one of these is 400 hertz and one is 500 hertz, according to the very back. So that's both of them plugged in. Now, in theory, if we throw a battery on that, they should make noise. Okay, that's actually quite loud and it's reverberating a lot off yeah. the uh, the aluminium panels so that's going to be a little bit interesting but crucially we have a horn that works and i'm now back when and where we started inside the car again so here is our brake pedal switch holder this all clicks together like that and holds the pedal switch really nicely and i can send this screw all the way down through the whole stack and we've got a tiny, tiny little bit of thread still coming out the end. This isn't actually enough for mounting it. This does need to be stood off away from the firewall a little bit more. We need a longer screw. But for the next step, which is actually figuring out where the hole has to be for this to go through the firewall, this is quite fine. So I'm going to go to a couple of bits of cutaway video of my phone down in there to kind of illustrate what's going on here. I'm going to try putting a bit little dab of paint on the end of this screw 
lining the thing up in place and then just tapping the screw against the firewall to see if we can give ourselves a marker for where we've got to punch a hole. Now the steering column's back in, and that was just about as much of a fight as usual. It does not enjoy going back in. We can get back to our horn and our steering wheel and all the other good bits in that sort of area. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed earlier when I showed you the stuff before, but we have done a little bit of sacrilege here. We have got an OMP horn button in a Momo wheel, so there's a decent chance I'm going to get struck by lightning by the car gods for doing this. But nonetheless, this is all together. So we've got our switch in the middle, we've got a connector coming out, I don't need the connector coming out there, that's where the steering shaft goes. I need the connector coming out further forward. So, let's just relocate that and pretend nothing happened. So, a bit of Benny Hill music here, please. Here we go. That is now in. So, we've got our steering wheel, we've got our splines where all the steering shaft fits to. We've got a nice hole out the side where I can connect this to the center section of our magic rotating bit. So if I can plug him on there, get our wheel on and hopefully not bite that cable anywhere. That seems fine, so I pop our horn out of the middle. Ah, I have detected a problem. The cables are only just long enough to reach, so whenever we want to take our steering wheel on and off with the big bolt that runs down the middle, we actually have to unplug the horn. But nonetheless, I get that bolt down the middle there. Always forget how many turns that takes. So our steering wheel's back on. I can reconnect here. So there's our connector back on. And now we can install the button. Uh, this is about as installed as it currently gets, which isn't great. So we're probably going to put some like silicon around it or something to hold it in future. So we've now got our steering shaft is connected. If I pull my ignition key out, we turn the wheel and we've now got steering lock. So. Op success, that's another item off the IVA list, and we've got a horn button mostly wired in. I've obviously got it wired up inside the steering hub here, and this is the car side of the wiring, so that's just going to plug in, just going to thread this roughly where we want it, which is down behind here, and it plugs into this bottom corner just down under here, and I bet I'm plugging it in upside down right now. There we go. Excuse the racket. So that's plugged in. So at the other end of these wires now we should have continuity when I press it and no continuity when I don't. And if we run that into our relay, we should have a completely working horn. Good news and bad news. Obviously, I'm down here in the footwell, which means something has gone wrong. However, most of the individual bits of this system do work correctly. We've tested that the button works and we get we get a signal in the right place. We've tested that the relay works. That all seems fine. We've tested that our spliced in wires all work. That all seems okay as well. However, Adrian has volunteered me to throw him under the bus because earlier he made up this little connector here to fit onto the car and he got two of the pins on it the wrong way around. So we're the wheel. Uh, where the button on the wheel clips into the connector that spins around with the wheel. Uh, he's connected it to, I think, pins two and three on that connector, and he's connected the car to pins three and four. So when we press the button, we don't actually get the connection in the right place. So we're not energizing the relay, so we're not getting a horn. Unfortunately, fixing that is a bit of a problem that we're not quite happy to tackle right now. The light is going, bordering on gone, and we've noticed that a lot of our electrical mistakes that we've made, this one notwithstanding, it was made in broad daylight, a lot of our electrical mistakes are actually done in the evenings when we're short on light, short on energy, short on patience, etc. We start rushing and kind of making mistakes. So we're going to leave that for future, and you're, we're going to pull a just trust us bro, that will definitely be fixed at some point at a later date. Now, if you want to make sure you don't miss the video when we get back to all this stuff, do remember to subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell. YouTube will then tell you when we've got new content out. Always like the video. We do really appreciate that. And comment down below if you can think of anything where you know, you'd know you have identified where we could have done something better or if you're really enjoying what we're doing. We, uh, we do read all the comments, believe it or not. I even remember to reply to them sometimes. So that's always a nice way to help the channel out. You can also jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. Support us there from as little as a dollar a month. It also gets you a discount at the merch store where you can buy one of these snazzy t-shirts that I'm wearing. I've got the short sleeve on. Adrian's currently standing behind the camera with another one. There's also hats, hoodies, t-shirts, all that sort of fun stuff to keep you uh, keep you warm through winter. Now I think I'm stuck here, so I'm probably just going to have a nap, and we'll see you next time.